Hello and welcome back and that is right it's time for another before you buy today I'm going to give you five reasons why you should consider buying the new QNAP TS233 and five reasons why you might want to give it a rest in today's video I'm going to talk about the things that stood out and didn't and unlike my long review that went on for about 20-30 minutes I'm going to keep things as tight as I can Reason number one that you might want to buy this NAS is because of that CPU. The CPU inside this, the ARM Cortex A55, it's the first NAS that we've seen take advantage of this new value series component. I'm going to go into more detail about that processor, but to give you a bit more on that, it is a quad core 2.0 gigahertz ARM 64 bit processor. And what that means is that this CPU can get a lot more done with a lot less resources. Generally, ARM based processors are found in mobiles, in tablets, in Chrome books they are designed for things that run on batteries or limited power use they are designed to be on days weeks months or even years at a time and involve taking the instruction that would normally be delivered to a cpu but it compresses it so it utilizes less resources to get the job done back and forth that does have certain downsides that i'll talk about later on but ultimately this cpu you're going to see in more and more NASs out there from synology's value series like the 222j the 122j the play to be that sort of thing but QNAP have got their first with this CPU and a lot of my testing although obviously it's utilized ultimately more power something I'll touch on later on is still a very good CPU for the price point here and runs the majority of QNAP applications that's right the memory on this device this little two bay this affordable little two bay arrives with two gig of memory most value series NASs that i've seen at a similar price point to this are even knocking around with one gig of ddr4 memory or even half a gig 512 megabytes in 2022 half a gig of memory on a system like this is just not on. And I like the fact this system arrives with not only DDR4 memory in conjunction with that CPU as mentioned, but also the fact that it arrives with 2 gig by default there. That is a good amount of memory to be playing with. Normally, uh, the operating system from QNAP takes up between 500 and 700 megabytes of memory when it is running in there in the background. So it's a good level of system service uh, resource to be playing with and definitely something that makes me want to recommend this device. Those of you that caught my review will know that I did demonstrate just how much noise this system makes. And I've got to say, I had, I've got two WD Red hard drives inside this NAS here. And when it was running, you could not hear it. When you boot the device first up, the fans kind of do a test fan spin and then they power down. So again, not only does that CPU inside there and uh, the memory combination result in the system being very modest in terms of power being consumed but on top of that and that's going to be particularly good to you guys in mobile homes in houseboats or limited uh, power or infrequent power running off a of ups but on top of that this system also means that thanks to its modest design that one small fan there on the rear and the top down loading system into those trays this is not a noisy NAS at all obviously if you use more enterprise level hard drives your Exos your Pros or any drive above 8 or 10 TB those drives are going to make their own clicks hums and whirs which this system isn't going to disguise but if you were looking at 2s and 4s and 6 TB drives you've got a very quiet low impact NAS right here A largely overlooked factor, I think, in this system, that I'm not even sure QNAT really do a very good job of making loud, is the MPU component of this device, a Neural Network Processing Unit. Now, QNAP has AI-powered services from the likes of its surveillance platform that's got a um, QVR face, and, of course, QMAGI, which allows photo recognition of facial recognition and object recognition. So you can, instead of searching for the names of files like IMG9 whatever, you can actually look up cat, cat dog, tree, beer, person, their names. It allows that extra uh, processing component on board to assist with those AI queries without utilizing a lot more raw processing power. And QNAP themselves state that a lot of their AI supported services in QMAGI are significantly faster, up to six times faster, thanks to that unit on there. And to have a modest NAS if you're jumping away from Google Photos and away from those third party 
photo backup services. One of the most appealing features is their AI powered uh, searching and organization and knowing you've got that built in when you migrate over to your own private NAS is gonna be very advantageous and it's quite unique to this NAS. Finally, going back to that subject of software, this system arrives with the latest version of QNAP's platform there, the system software services known as QTS5. Now again, even though this is a very modestly specced NAS, it has the latest version. It runs the majority of QNAP's applications. Again, the more highly graphical ones like virtualization and stuff that involves transcoding or HDMI out, which this doesn't feature, they aren't supported on this, but most of the data processing, the multimedia stuff is on this, including support of all of those applications from uh, your iOS, um, um, iTunes there, and Google Play. You can run a myriad of tailored apps in conjunction with this, as well as client apps for Mac and Windows systems to back up in a very tailored way and more. And with support of hybrid backup sync 3, hybrid mount, video station, photo station, music station, Q Maggie, QVR Elite for its um, surveillance there on board. That is a whole host of applications available to this, including Plex Media Server as well, all supported on this device that you can enjoy all included with the purchase. But of course, it can't all be good news. Nothing is perfect. And in the case of this NAS, I've got to say, there's a few things about it that may put you off. There's certainly things I mentioned in the review, but let's crack on with it. The first thing about this that I'm less keen on, of course, as mentioned in the review, is the fact that it features one gigabit ethernet. I've got to say, one gigabit ethernet on this device is pretty underwhelming. QNAP released a lot of 2.5G and even 5GBE solutions in the last 18 months, and it seems insane to me that even though this is a value series NAS, that they did not put 2.5GBE on this system. I like it, and I like that you know it, I can access a lot of my data on it, but with uh, internet speed from some internet service providers, including Virgin here in the UK, not only providing 2.5 GBE routers included with their services, but also providing internet connections that are greater than the gigabit, we're running a risk, at least as far as NAS brands are, that there are cloud services out there that will provide faster speed of access than a NAS in your home, which is ludicrous. And given that the, the majority of the SMB and prosumer solutions like the 53D and the 251, uh, 451, some of these have arrived with 2.5 GBE on board at the same price as 1 GBE. The fact that this has 1 GBE, even at this price point, leaves me a little disappointed. Talking about port and disappointment, these USB 2 ports, frankly, can go do one. The fact that they're on there to me is mildly insulting, and I get it. It has a USB 3 port there on the front. That's lovely. That's great. It's one touch copy as well. I'm a big fan of one touch copy. I've mentioned it many, many times in the past. But in the case of this device, these two USB 2 ports here are useless to me. I don't know what I'm going to use them for. They're too slow for storage. I can't use the 5 GBE adapter on these. I can't use them for an expansion. They're too slow. I might be able to use them for a USB printer, but I would just use a Wi-Fi printer. I can use a UPS, but this thing's really, really small. So why would I use such a beefy UPS where I'd want to have monitoring of that scale? Those USB 2 ports there, I mean, it's good that they're there rather than no other USB 2 ports. But it seems insane to me that they couldn't get on another USB 3 without streamlining something on this device. Again, better to have them than not have them, but USB 2 on this, particularly with a lack of HDMI, meaning KVM, keyboard, video, mouse, isn't even on the table here, means that these ports here are pretty useless to me. My next complaint kind of goes back to the memory on the system. I am pleased there is two gig of memory and I am pleased it is DDR4, but the fact I can't upgrade that memory is a real bitter pill to swallow. This system arriving with two gig when the system's already gonna use at least half a gig for general system processing and operations means that that only leaves me 1.5 gigabyte to use in all my different applications and services and some of those are more aggressive than others. The fact that I can't upgrade when I know uh, QNAP have some systems in their lineup featuring ARM processors that have two or four or eight gig options in their lineup and this sticks me with just two is going to be difficult for me to get around because that memory the minute i'm running multiple processes or the minute i have multiple users accessing at once 
the CPU is not going to be my problem. It's going to be the memory, the number of ARM supporting my services at once that this device is going to, you know, kind of present to me in a much more limited fashion. My final two points are kind of software based, but they're coming at it in slightly different directions. Uh, the CPU inside this device, it's going to struggle. There's no avoiding it. This CPU inside, although it is a quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor there, and it is 64 bit in architecture, and it is ARM managing to compress some of those processes. When I was trying to run this system, when I was running multiple applications at once, even when I got to about three apps at once, the CPU never dipped below 80 to 90% at any given time. That CPU, if you try to run QVR Elite in conjunction with Hybrid Backup Sync 3 with even just one task, the system CPU strikes straight up to 85%. And with that memory, remember I mentioned about just two, um, not just, but two gig of memory that just can't be upgraded. The hardware resources here are going to reach a glass ceiling very, very quickly. And you have to understand when you're looking at a device like this, it is priced that way for that hardware for a reason. It is not trying to be bigger than its boots. So if you are going to utilize this, do bear in mind that one of the cons for me about it is that CPU hardware inside does not spread thinly very well. And if you try to run several processes, you know, more than two or even three at most, you are going to feel delays across every app. It's a great NAS for one or two tasks at any given time, but after that, it's nothing but bottleneck afterwards. Finally, yes, coming back to the subject of software and that CPU inside there, when I did my Plex Media Server testing on this, and a number of you are looking at a NAS like this that's really, really affordable to enjoy the multimedia in your home, whether it's using Plex or the native applications, this NAS, when it comes to uh, 4K, when it comes to H.265 media, so HEVC or highly efficient video codec, or if you're looking at 10-bit HDR, this NAS is not for you. Those three media types, 4K and those two compression methods, forget it. This system could barely play even the lowest spec of those. It played everything I threw at it in 1080p, H.264, which luckily a lot of media actually is these days, but 4K and the denser, more compressive techniques were just not supported on this device. So if you do have an enormous library of multimedia that you're hoping to store on this and stream on Plex or using the native apps, do double check what the compression techniques and are they mostly H.264 or H.265 because it will make a difference. This does not have the hardware resources to uh, re-encode or transcode those files on the fly very well. And then if you run so much as one other small process, this isn't going to do it for you. Some of the stuff I was doing on this with even transcoding light 1080p, and I mean really light stuff, the CPU was at 99% the whole time. So again, transcoding, 4K, H.265 and HDR media, forget it, this is not the NAS for you. But this has been five reasons to buy the new TS233 and five reasons that you might want to give it a miss. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, let me know by clicking like and subscribe to learn more. There's a full review linked in the description as well as a full 30 minute review of this in hardware and software that I published a short while ago that I recommend you check out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.